This is my impression of an English stand-up comedian at the Melbourne Comedy Festival would bring out. Okay. This is every act I've seen for 10 years. My dad, my dad is like a man. He's a man, man. And I'm more like, a, I'm, more like, you know, I'm, like I'm like a man. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's really yeah, hard because yeah. I'm awkward. Like, I, I was like quite awkward, like talking to women. And, and then those you, guys after the show were like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah. that was like watching stars in their eyes. <laughs> Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Brennan Reese. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Content warning. Ladies and gentlemen, the following podcast is not suitable for all audiences, and viewer slash listener discretion is advised. For example, if when you just heard the term ladies and gentlemen, you immediately thought about how exclusionary it is, then it's probably best you turn this off now. Dead Men Talking invites you to join the world's largest social network for adults, Adult Friend Finder. As a leading adult-oriented social networking platform, our aim is to connect like-minded individuals and create a safe and inclusive environment for exploring all kinds of adult relationships. For over 25 years, Adult Friend Finder has been the original and number one casual dating site on the market. With 120 million members worldwide, you are sure to find hundreds of sexy local members matches for any relationship experience you are seeking. Find sex, hookups and chat live at dmt.adultfriendfinder.com. Hello, welcome to Dead Men Talking on tour at the Edinburgh Festival with me, Rob Mulholland, him, a big fat cunt, and a very special guest, Amos Gill. G'day, lads. Uh, hey. Good to be here. Good to have you, We've mate. never met. I met Rob in Perth. Oh, yeah. he's not shut up about you since. Oh, yeah. Holy fucking shit. Because well, I gave him a lift home twice and that was enough to oh my god if, if, I, if I have to fucking hear about Amos's boat one more well, fucking he time he says he took me lift home he went, I went on his boat I'm set like, I'm sat in a fucking sweaty studio in Horwich Bolton <laughs> my new friend's got a boat go fuck yourself the purrier well yeah. me mum is uh, sucking the dick of a man who owns a gold mine and he's really like, uh, and he's yeah. got a yacht yeah, and yeah. so my mum's like if you, if you want to progress your career you can have the boat and put your friends on it that's <laughs> amazing and let me say this unbelievable networking tool good yeah. networking tool I got I got how many comics do you reckon am I putting there about 15, 15 20. English and Scottish comedians no women no no women <laughs> <laughs> we don't do hoes on the boat my mum's the only hoe on the boat she's a queen hoe <laughs> right. my mum's rule is no hot women on the boat they could fuck Wayne and then with the whole family yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. then there's no boat for anyone because <laughs> she loses is the boat there. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. the problem. Yeah, yeah. Right? So my job is to ward the women away so that Wayne believes <laughs> With your toxic that my 62 year old creation mother is the finest piece of art. <laughs> 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 I even tell the other guys, I'm like, hitting my mum a little bit. You so know? He <laughs> Mark Jennings really leading in. <laughs> Mark, Jennings. Mark Jennings is having a right flirt with his mum. He, he owns a gold mine. Yeah, he's on the board of a gold mine. How he, does one go to like get into the gold mining owning process. Well, his was a lucky one. He Let me he, guess, he started from the bottom, he? started from the bottom, now he's his, his way up. He started with started copper. Panning. <laughs> <laughs> you tend to find that about gold mines. They really promote from within. Yeah. You know, it's a real culture of... Uh, yeah. He's so close to getting a diamond mine in South Africa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he, um, no, he was one of these dudes. Who, he was like just the fitter turner. So in Perth, is, Perth is all these... Guys who work in the trades, they do fly in, fly out work, but they get paid a shit ton. Yeah. So it's like working class dudes on about $350,000 a year. Ooh. And he and his mates, he had four of them, they were saving all this money. And then they found a deserted plot of land that one of the big mines was like, it's fucking useless, it's dangerous. He bought it, they surveyed it, and they found gold and they sold the company for a fucking shit ton. And so he got very lucky with that. Yeah. <clears throat> That and is so, so lucky, isn't it? Because yes. and that's nine the, times out of ten, you just blow all your money on a useless pot of land. That's what he, yeah. that's what he said. There's a they, lot of nothing around Perth as well. Oh, like you could very easily just buy a patch of fuck all. And yeah. so luckily, like he hit some cash. And but that's the good thing about him is he's like he's a very wealthy dude, but he's not he's not a prat. He's yeah, one of the yeah, boys. Yeah. Like he's properly one of the boys. Yeah. He like you know he took us all out after the boat and just spent an insane amount of money just getting everyone rat ass. Yeah, <laughs> like, he, was a, he was just like everyone was stumbling. Out. They opened this also, bar he for us. He is one of those problems though, because like he's a great bloke, but he'll have like fifteen pints and he's meeting the comedians and he's like, "You're a comic, are you, mate? Have you heard the one about the Aboriginal that walked in?" I'm like, "Oh." oh. 
Oh yeah, he, <laughs> he, he told me he told me a couple of ones I won't be repeating. You know, it was a couple of one of those. I was like, yeah, that's a good one. Ooh. He's, um, I don't think I don't think we use a few of those words anymore. But you know, there's about there's about six in there that made me shiver. Is, is, uh, is Aboriginal over there like oh, our? Like you don't touch no, it's not. It's not an, Aboriginal isn't a bad word. That's no, the no, 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 no. But is it like our? Uh, They're natives there. Like yeah, yeah, I know. But you know how like your granddad over here would tell like Asian jokes. Oh yeah, I mean? yeah, it'd be Aboriginal yeah, jokes. It's like that. Aye, okay. And it always ends with this. Oh, I'm friends with a couple of them. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. I don't mind them. <laughs> so I employ the, the bastard. <laughs> <laughs> One of them cleans my dunny. <laughs> are there stereotypes? Because I've never, I don't yeah, know like, Aboriginal Australians are incredibly racist to Aboriginal people. Oh, yeah. Like crazily. Oh, someone like, told You know how me. racist Australians are? Why wouldn't they be doing it to their own people? Who told me about this? Oh, Day or something like that. What? I'm just going to get out of the shop. No, right. right. First of all, <laughs> what you've just done there is you've used a racial slur. Is that, um, is that it? That's our N word. No. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh dear. I was yeah. like, can we get a clean? It's very much the wow. same. Wow. It's sorry. It's very much the same as if we were talking about England's Pakistani community and Amos had done the same shortening. That's, oh. the, that's the equivalent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. We'll, probably I, just, we'll bleep that and put a little alpha over you. I, 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 I uh, apologize to any people of Aboriginal yeah. no, that. nations, Australian. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so well, so I need to preface this now that I know that I've done that with, I yeah. don't know literally anything about that culture. No, I think everyone knows other how ignorant than, you are. Um, <laughs> Ayers Rock is called Uluru, and that's yeah. all I know. Uh, Uluru, right, yeah. so, so now what you're thing thinking of, Invasion Day, which is also known as Australia that's Day the by one. the whites, and we had a fucking great time. Oh yeah, this was, this was, this was fucking... And they all hate it. Yeah. Yeah, so Australia Day is no longer a day that's really to be celebrated. Yeah. It's slowly but Because it's the day that the Brits landed on Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So it's out, not right? not everyone had a great day. So it's Invasion Day, <laughs> Survival Day, mm -hmm. and so Aboriginal people don't really like you partying anymore. Mm -hmm. And what I So did, like in Melbourne, no one does it. No, they're all like liberal and Perth, modern. It's in Perth, they're like, way! Yeah, it's amazing day. Right. Everyone, right. In okay. Perth, they're like... Eh, eh, so this is what I was thinking of, and I inadvertently made... Australia Day worse. Yeah, you managed to make a day when the Brits killed a load of natives more racist. But, but the way that we celebrated the day... It's a gift! We, we, we had 15 Scottish and English comedians on a boat. We went out for the day and we were like, this is very woke, we're giving the land back for one day. You know, We've, we've abandoned it, let them have it. But at the end of the day, it was 20 sunburnt British people coming onto a boat <laughs> and then off getting it, off onto, onto Australia the as though we were reenactors. <laughs> <laughs> was, honestly, it was just this recreation of pasty drunk Brits wandering wow. inland. Ah. And Aboriginal people looking at us like, oh, they've done it again. <laughs> I don't know. Rob I gets off yeah. all uncoordinated. <laughs> I, think like, so, I think we could see these ones off. <laughs> this second wave of invasion isn't quite as scary. <laughs> just being a very sunburned Ray Bradshaw. <laughs> so um, what do they do during uh, Australia Day? Didn't like the way you said they then. That felt off. <laughs> okay, uh, what, I, I what do they do? <laughs> during <laughs> That's a better emphasis. Australia Day. Look, some right. people protest, but most for most of us, it's just a fucking day off. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. and people just get hammered and have a barbecue. Yeah, uh, and, you know, but, but because but, it lay in Perth, though, like because it's like uh, it's such an mad culture in Perth. Because it, like I say, it's like loads of like uh, working class people with fuck all education, but money. Just like so Aberdeen. So, yeah, it is a bit like that, but like uh, but the best weather. You know, it's thirty five degrees okay. every day and gorgeous. So everyone like owns little boats and that. So where we were out, there was just like fucking three hundred boats, and everyone's on the boat party, and then yeah. there's and like, everyone links boats, and then you just swim yeah, between the boats. Everyone's yes. playing music off the back. Uh, but like the spent, only everyone spent all day. Playing German umpire music really loud off our boat, just, just really be, annoying everyone around us. Right. Just to add that extra level of racism, like, and it's German as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it felt really Wehrmacht. Yeah, I got a German missus, so I, I, I play a lot of uh, Abgrace key music. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave Mein Kampf around the house, <laughs> make you feel dead. It's just when he starts singing along, he starts doing this. <laughs> <laughs> His hair's flapping. <laughs> It was an incredibly accidentally racist day. Yeah, but yeah, what yeah. a good day. We, we, look, we had, a, we had a good time, but I'll tell you this. You've put me on this podcast. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, we're, we're good. Oh, there's a lot of <laughs> other English comedians out there who when I, when I uh, welcome them to my homeland, yeah. their favour's not being repaid, let me tell you. Oh, oh really? Dear. No one's taken me to the fucking Highlands. Yeah. I haven't had a whiskey tasting from any of the Scottish oh, boys. Mate. If, I, yeah. if I was up here for time, Because their mums are ugly slags. <laughs> They're not getting boats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Shout out to yeah. you, Jennings. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, yeah, there's no, there's no Agnes that shagged her way onto a boat. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, you... nice one, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you muck slag. <laughs> like when you, uh, when you're in the north of England, mate, I'll take you around. I'll show you some sights. I'll, uh, you know, you'll have to come down to some proper I've a, hospitality. Listen, man, I've got to fuck it. I've got to reset. Man, I've been so negative up here. Yeah. Hey? Yeah, and I've turned on England. In a like big I knew he'd fucking hate it. Well, like, this isn't yeah. England. So. That's the, this is the, I, and there's a no, lot of it's, English it's here. It's the though. English that come up here for the festival. I don't. I understand people rag on like the middle class English, but I thought it was a stereotype. I've fucking had a gutful of them. Mm. I've met toffs and I like them, and I've met working class English people and mm. I like them. Yeah, there's something about them that they're fun and they know what they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These ones that are these social climbing, scared to have a good time, yeah, yeah, buttoned yeah. down. Dudes that I've had in my show, I've just been dreadful. And everyone's old at this festival. Yeah, it's a very skews old. And like to be fair, the venue you're in is an old posh people's venue. What yeah. venue you I'm in? I'm in the Gilded Balloon. Oh, Christ. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Gilded the, Balloon the and like Pleasance Tevier. and that, they're all old and posh. Everyone who goes So I was in the Tevia yesterday mm. and it's fucking, it wasn't great. Yeah. It was not yeah. good. That venue was not good at all. The room wasn't great, no. Um, no, but the way it was fucking managed. So yeah. I went down. Oh yeah, like, I was we trying to get to in. They, could, they didn't know where it was. There's no yeah. sign saying what room so, any shows so in. So I went to, uh, we had Kieran Parker and mm. uh, William Thompson yesterday and Kieran uh, left us three comps on the door. Right, right. So uh, Binty and uh, Rob were getting here a bit later. I got there for the start of the show. I go down to the front of, you know, the thing and I said, oh, there's three tickets on the door in my name. They went, you need to go to the box office. And mm -hmm. I go, fine. So I go up to the box office. I say, there's three tickets under my name. And they go, what name? And I they search. And then they go, no, there's nothing here. And I go, uh. and then the manager comes out and he goes, this has been happening all day. He said, I'm sick of this. He, he radios somebody in and I wait for about five minutes and this other person comes down and they go, I don't know what you want me to do. I'll just walk him in. No, man, and I said, well, I've got two other people coming. And they said, well, yeah. what are their names? I said, well, they'll just say my name. I said, but they're both like tall. They're both like six, seven. Like, yeah, we're both big freaks. Like Bentley looks like Shrek mm -hmm. and I'm me. So, you know, we're, we're distinctive. Yeah, recognizable. Yeah. So I get into this venue and I'm already like, this is a bit of a, this no, is there's a, bit a, of a th there's staffing mm -hmm. issues. I get in the venue. Because they're all volunteers. I get in the venue. There is, it's about 150 seater, would you say? Uh -huh. There's nobody showing anybody to any seats. Yeah. And it's about half full. So there's just pockets of empty space everywhere. There's nobody showing in. And throughout the show, there were people, the pockets of people just chatting. There was nobody around to sort of police that. And it's like, you go, these people are paying thousands of pounds yeah. for this room. Put somebody on £10 an hour there. Make them stand there. How is that so hard? Well, we had a, so my tech is like a, a guy who lives in Barcelona and he's just over here on a trip. He's an older guy called Fetty, right? And he's having a mare. Sorry, a... Freddie always, right, whilst we're doing these handheld mics, he always fiddles with the cable and all I hear in my headphones is... I can't help it. I'm a fiddly guy. <laughs> lean, anyway, it back, lean it back on you. Yeah, just get it on your tits. Yeah, get it, get it on the... <laughs> yeah. Just there did he go. fuck that mic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. this guy called I got Freddy... titties and I like fiddling <laughs> and one day that might get me a boat. <laughs> I can know. If we know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He doesn't go, man. He just picks up pennies. <laughs> that's, that's his thing. <laughs> so this tech called Freddy, he's at a night, he's at a mare because yeah. he's learning the system and I'm like, play rock music, play my walk on music a bit louder, yeah. turn on my microphone when I say thank you put on the song, the yeah. end. Somehow we've had a lot of issues, right? And there's been issues afterwards. And he and I, have, we've been having words with each other, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I did like the other night, I had the Scotsman in and I had a fucking stinker. Yeah. Like these people hated me. Yeah. And the Gilded staff are all trying to be very, you know, they're nice girls. They're like, yeah. I thought it was funny. Or, yeah. I thought you were really good. Fetty goes, tonight was shit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, reviewers, man, yeah. worst one of the run. <laughs> No energy. That's and so I'm like, funny. well, Fed, you did start by not playing my walk-on song. Yeah, my, yeah, my microphone was turned off at the back. Yeah. The first night he thought you just, he didn't know that you intro yourself. What? So he just thought, oh, you just walk on and you start. And so I was waiting there and we meant to start at 8.30 and yeah. it's like 8.42. And then yeah. he just runs down and he's looking at me like this. And I was like, mate, you need to turn my microphone on. Yeah. And he's like, just start. Yeah. 
Just you start. I'm like, I need, I need to intro myself. <laughs> right, that, what's bad is this isn't the first uh, tech issues we've had. When I saw your show in uh, Adelaide, there was oh an incredible God. fucking tech. It was so funny, man. So like uh, Amos is backstage and like before the show is in Adelaide, like they made in the, the venue you're in, they, they made you do a, an acknowledgement of land. Oh, we have to talk about this because this it's is- It's fucking fuck wild, right? Do you know about the acknowledgement of land? You told me about it. Yeah, it's so insane. Right? So before a show is in loads of the venues in uh, Adelaide, they'll have a little, uh, a, a little bit of music plays and there's a recorded speech that goes like, oh, we acknowledge that this land uh, belongs to the native people yeah. and we stole it. And then we you acknowledge play, it's we theirs. are the champions by Queen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, that is essentially uh, Amos's normal intro, but it didn't. My <laughs> intro song is "The Boys Are Back." Yeah, the boys are back. Yeah, so like and that plays like, for trouble. <laughs> that comes on immediately after it, right? But on this night, it didn't even come on, right? The the, the acknowledgement of land. So Amos is just backstage. He's come on the manager. Ah, oh, that that was meant to be an acknowledgement of land there. Uh, just. Uh, Oh, maybe just all feel sad for a minute and, and uh, no laugh. I laugh at the back and he go and like, he, he didn't know I was in and he just goes, ah, slightly worrying. The only laugh I heard was from my friend <laughs> <laughs> over the mic yeah. from the back. Deathly silence. Deathly silence while I'm creasing laughing. As, as I'm going, we've committed a genocide. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. You're a terrible person. Yeah. Amos Gill. <laughs> and then you walk out and it kills the vibe because even all my Aboriginal friends, there's a lot of them. Some like it, but some are just like, it's like you're acknowledging what you've done. But the, the fringes are so ridiculous because they take over parklands mm. right? yeah. and they put tents up for the month. But the, a lot of Aboriginal people who are like, they live in tents. They live in that parkland. They get shooed out. Yeah. Right. So the festival can come in and then they go, we've stolen the land and we're sorry about it. And you're like, you've done it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. As well, um, let's be real. You're not sorry. No, we no, of course. No, if they were sorry, they'd give it back. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah you yeah, fucking yeah. do something about it. But, but it's like, all well and good being like, oh, guys, let's make sure we play this announcement. Yeah. None of you really care. It's None like apologizing really for bothered. a rape while your dick's still in him. <laughs> it's like you're still doing it's it. Terribly you haven't even this. jizzed and you're already apologizing. Well, I think like- they say always was, always will be. That's the shirt. Yeah, yeah. And I always go, is. Like the reality is, it is no longer. Yeah. You're not giving up your flat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, it's, it's just window dressing guys. That is it. If, you, if you're that committed to it, move out your house and let Aboriginal people have it. And so, yeah, yeah. when I but when I got here, I tried to do a thing the first three nights, which was a disaster, because I tried to explain, I oh, in Australia, we have to play this because mm-hmm. what you did to the Aboriginal people when you landed. Yeah, yeah. And now we have to have our shows ruined. So, I'm, like, I'm going to do one for you. So, I pre recorded, uh, hey, British people, just let you know, you went yeah, to Australia, yeah. you butchered people. So the shows are ruined there. They should be ruined here. But it's just four minutes. And people just didn't get the it. The audience not getting it. And yeah, people yeah, yeah. going, hey, you're a bunch My- of cunts, aren't you? <laughs> And then it's like, oh, this is, what, what, we don't know what the context of this yeah. even was. In, uh, in Adelaide, like my, uh, my venue didn't do that. I didn't make, yeah, like play that. But I would uh, I started in my show about 10 minutes in going, oh, shit, I've not done the acknowledgement of land. Uh, like, and I just went, ah, right, here it is. Um, we Brits stole this fair and square. Get over it. Right. And I was <laughs> cracked into yeah, the rest yeah, of the show. Yeah. Fun. And like Aboriginal people have pissed themselves because they're sick of the fucking token yeah, gesture. Yeah, like yeah, It doesn't yeah, help yeah, anyone yeah. except the fucking rich white person who's like, I've helped. Uh, there's one there's one friend I have in Adelaide who's an Aboriginal dude and mm-hmm. he he he's like he loves it right because he's a, a traditional Aboriginal dancer yeah and he's like mate the money that I'm making I from bet. these opening ceremonies that oh, I'm gonna go yeah. he goes literally every company is guilted into doing it and so there I am with me smoke sticks <laughs> you know <what laughs> I mean? it's like he pulls out his like pulls out the smoking sticks and he has his kids dance and they do yeah. a they do a welcome dance and welcome to the festival and then they just sort of like get in their Range Rover and go to the next gig. <laughs> the I love that though. Seriously. Get the bag. Get the bag. Like, like fucking, that's we, great. we love it. We're like, dude, yeah. crush it. That's fucking they're sick. They're making good money from it. Yeah. White Guild is a lucrative terrible, industry. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. It's fucking great. If I could do that, I would. 100%. Yeah. You know, yeah. Who doesn't want to work in a grass skirt? <laughs> <laughs> in a flammable country. <laughs> yeah, that's why you have so many bushfires. climate fires. change we've given them. It's a risky endeavor for the smoking ceremony. <laughs> it's all these flaming Aborigines. Yeah. yeah. Thanks to climate change, this is now a grass miniskirt. <laughs> so I don't know. Look, look the, the place is, uh, I'm very like pro-America. You know this about me. Yeah. Because yeah, I live yeah. in the States. Oh, right. And okay. So you, you live in LA. I live in LA. And yeah. I, and I a real with, star fucker. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I would prefer to be in New Amos York. Amos is just like, oh, is someone famous going to get on their tit? 
Yeah. Yeah. The apple didn't fall far from the tree, did it? <laughs> Jim Jeffries doesn't have a boat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for context, Amos does loads of gyms to oh, uh, support. This, this is true. Yeah. But I, I've noticed a lot of people here at the Pleasants and everything, they come down hard on America. Mm. And I've just been, I've taken it upon myself to like, I fucking love America, man. Yeah. I love the rough housery of it. They're like, there's people sleeping on the streets. I would rather be in a tent in Venice Beach than be here in Scotland. It's There's good weather. There's sexy people. Yeah. Even the food scraps are nicer. Yeah. The place is a fucking dump. Like, whilst people might be worse looking here, they are slags though. That's the ban- that's the balance you get here. You know, like... Uh, yeah, I'm not one of these people that's like the numbers, you know, get <laughs> get two fives equals a ten. Yeah. I'll, wait for, I'll wait for the ten. Yeah. And that is... Good looking privilege in a nutshell. Yeah, also that's wait, why he's a good looking lad. Yeah, you, you say two that, fives doesn't equal a ten. It's it's half. It's to half. Me, two fives <laughs> equals a year. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's right. Amos, like, it's firstly, it's good looking privilege. It's fifty percent that, and fifty percent the fact that Amos is gay. <laughs> <laughs> Amos is super gay. Please say that I need a bump. At the moment, at the best Are you gay, Amos? I'm not gay. He's oh, well right. gay. I'm, 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 Amos, I'm, what do you type I'm into gay, porn sites? I'm gay adjacent. What, what do you type? Into I porn? always I serve for the for the man because I, I don't look for the woman to get fucked I like the way that a man does it so that's how I categorize my porn you, what so he searches for male like porn stars the man does it, it. to me it's like searching for food I search for the chef I go I want to know the way that he makes the food again so go, that is insane yeah. <laughs> imagine if you were hungry yeah. and you went I want something Jamie Oliver's yeah. made yeah. that's so stupid yeah. because I like I'm like Manuel Ferreira he fucks them properly I like the way that he does. He doesn't talk, you know, maybe I'm looking for someone that doesn't talk too much. Mate, it, I'm it, looking for the cock size not to be too annoying. See, I do that with barbers. Yeah. Like I like not having a barber that talks at all. Right. I'm more about the barber than the location or the price. Right. It's so very, I get it. It's very different to pornography, I would suggest. Uh, in that. Yeah, no, but, because like I used to be like James Dean. The clips are good. Yeah. Uh, I'm into that sort of style today. <laughs> like it, it, the worst explanation, Amos, that we go to, the worst analogy, he goes, yeah, it's like, you know, you go to see the DJ, not the records. I'm like, so women are plastic discs <laughs> yes, in this analogy. Yes, they get played by David Guetta. <laughs> I don't care what disc is on there, I'm having fun in Ibiza. Because <laughs> David I'm- gets the party started. <laughs> This is insane. It's wild, That's the isn't most it? insane yeah. way to look at porn. Yeah. It's more insane than if you went, I searched by video length. Yeah. Like that's, <laughs> that's more, that makes more sense to yeah. me. Because you go, oh, I don't have time to watch 40 I mean, minutes. I, de- I, I definitely like do. I watch yeah, definitely. But doesn't the man set the start, like set the tone? <laughs> wow. Like Sergio Bush gets, you know, dictating the tempo. Yeah. Mate, <laughs> the, amount, the amount of scanning his favourite porn stars do. Just constantly looking around. That's the thing about great porn stars. They're aware of the space around yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, no, if you watch... get on the front foot, aggressive yeah. style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah if you yeah. watch the They're fucking, impossible. you won't see the man. But if you see, if you watch the man, you will see the whole fuck. <laughs> that's, why, that's why he likes Manuel Ferreira. Uh, He's impossible to press. <laughs> He's just the most press resistant porn star going. Yeah, I, my, my porn hub search is gig and press. I want, a, <laughs> I want a German. I want a big tank. <laughs> German on top of you. There's no relentless pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Lord above. <laughs> if I did Gag and Press yeah. porn studios, you would watch it. Yeah, it is a good name for a porn just studio, to be fair. Fucking German yeah. men that look like Ivan Drago just <laughs> getting it done. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I could name more than three male porn stars. No, nah. I could name more than one. No, nah, I don't Danny think... Deeks. We nearly got him on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really know. No, I, I who's that guy from him. Britain? That Brazzers man, Kieran Lee. I like. I said that. I didn't know his name. Kieran yeah, exactly. Lee. Oh, who's that guy? <laughs> that definitely not typed in the search bar. <laughs> Who's that name from Brazzers from England, Kieran Lee? <laughs> Literally <laughs> finished before he even finished the sentence. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, like I, I, that's so I attribute Amos's pickiness with women to uh, gayness, gayness, essentially. Yeah, because yeah, I, I can appreciate a much wider yeah, range you, of women. You, you do always say this to me. I have yeah. a very set type. Of that you do. You, you're, you're, you're like that. Gay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you, you, you reject ninety nine percent of women, whereas I have a much wider but range. It's because he can afford to. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, you've yeah, yeah. never had that. Did you do? You know, you're very happily in a relationship. I am. Yeah. yeah. Did you know? Did you think Australian women were into you? Yeah. You know, a few of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the accent definitely. Stuff, I realised like it would have definitely been a massive advantage. I would have. I could have done very well. But nobody yeah. has like, um, like nobody 
foreign countries and that, nobody has like that idea of British people, your accent. Do you know what I no, mean? No, but like, so like, so it's like, it's so it's Sean Bean is doing a lot of heavy lifting for me. Sean yeah. Bean has spread my accent around the world. No, because know? we hate, like, we hate Australia so much, because, particularly in the, if the fringes and everything. I can't watch, this is my impression of an English stand up comedian at the Melbourne Comedy Festival would bring out. Okay. This is every act. I've seen for 10 years. My dad, my dad is like a man. He's a man, man. And I'm more like, a, I'm, more like you know, I'm like, I'm like a man. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's really hard because yeah, yeah. I'm awkward. Like, I, I was like quite awkward, like talking to women. And, and then those you, guys after the show are like, hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah. that was like watching stars in their eyes. <laughs> Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Brennan Reese. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's what it was like. I'm a man. Like, I'm not like a man, uh, man. Like Brendan's <gasps> and, and this Brendan's show, the good version of oh, Fuck you. Brendan's bar's about yeah, yeah, yeah. But like this show is about like trying to work out like what is it to be a man? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. mate, go watch the last 35 English comics that came here to tell us that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you have to crowbar in a narrative. Yeah. And that's why I prefer like that's why I always preferred America out of Britain. And then I then I met yeah. a lot of you and, and there's a lot of sound people, but you it's just, just you've what seen gets London put stand up. Yes, you've yeah, seen yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like, it's like what gets put forward turned me off the UK, dude. Yeah, yeah. And then I went to the water and stuff and I was like, yeah. oh, it's just the American school of like, just smash yeah. it out. Yeah. And like, I think, honestly, I think at this festival this year, like, I don't know if it's maybe self selecting because of the shows I've seen, but like talking to other people and anecdotally and what I've seen online as well, like, I feel like there's a, a real uh, resurgence of just like dead funny stand up. Yeah. I've seen loads of shows that have just been an hour of someone twatting it. And like, those are doing really well this year. And I think that like having to have a narrative is falling away. I think comedians are getting more control of shit so they don't need to count. But I find with the narrative shows in comedy, there's some that I, there's some of my favorite one hours ever. I watched narrative. that Burn show yesterday yeah. and it's one of the best things I've ever fucking seen. But like Greg Fleet in Australia, I don't know if yeah, you know yeah, him, he was like, what, he's a heroin addict for yeah, 30 yeah. years. And so he had a show called um, <clears throat> 20 Years in a Long Sleeve Shirt and yeah. it was just about his life on smack, right? Just my water, by the way. Yeah, great, great hour of comedy. Yeah. But like he had, he did one show about that after a very interesting life. Jesus. I'm tangled. We're he, continuing this podcast. He, he, did, he, did one, he did one show about that. And then he had another show called Tie Dye, yeah. which was about the time he was in Thailand. He got involved with a, some mobsters and he ended up fighting it for, in a guerrilla uh, army. Wow. Right? But it's like there's actual stories. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. have to finagle anything there. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, I yeah. love when someone's got one great story to tell, they'll tell it. Yeah, yeah. But when, when you know. And make look, it funny. I've got friends in Australia now who have had a big debut yeah. with their – you know, their victim show. Yeah. And it was good. They're now calling me going, I'm at the therapist trying to get diagnosed with something because I want to discover more about my problems. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. And you can sniff, it's backwards. You sniff that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're chasing you problems guys, to have something to write about. You guys accepting that a spectrum exists is the worst thing to ever happen to mental health. <laughs> Either you have it or you don't. Yeah. I'm not having this. I'm on the spectrum because every because that, all, yeah. that means that means that is very much the nature of a spectrum. No, I know, but the problem is, is it means that people with one out of fifty symptoms yeah. get to go. Well, I'm on the spectrum. I'm just at one side, yeah. and it's not. It's like no, you have to be more than halfway across the spectrum. I think you have to cross the diagnostic <laughs> threshold. Yeah. I think like, that's the thing. There are like thresholds. That? Yeah, but doctors. Yeah, yeah, but people. The Guardian. I thought. People, people, the Guardian yeah. was in charge of our medical policy. To but <laughs> people take the idea of a spectrum as being, oh, as long as I have any of these things, yeah, yeah, yeah. then I can The way I, I see have. it as, uh, is like, obviously there's a whole uh, spectrum of all these traits or whatever, but there's a certain point where you get along it where you're like, right, you're now in the bit that is diagnosable. Oh, like, if you're up here, you might, well, you might well have some of the traits, but not yeah. that's the line where it becomes the. Do you know what the, I always love, Amos? Is uh, when you talk to ADHD people about uh, you know diagnosis yeah, yeah. and stuff, they'll give you a long thing about diagnosis. Um, have any of you guys had an actual it's clinical quite, date? No, quite hard to, it's really hard to get one. Hard it's to get, so hard to get, hard to get one. To get to appointments. <laughs> can't get to the appointment. And TikTok told me. I honestly, I was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I did a BuzzFeed yeah. quiz. I, I That's genu what I need. I've genuinely missed three appointments for an ADHD <laughs> diagnosis, which I think at that point you should just get one. Like the, I'm sure I have ADHD. Like, yeah. I'm sure I have ADHD, right? But Amongst like, many yes, other things, was, Amos. But I don't, I don't like dip into anything. I'm like, I used to, it's just character traits for me. I'm like, yeah. that's your character traits. I don't want to, I hate medicalizing everything everything about my life yeah. <laughs> this, this, this is what i am i've worked you work out how to manage things yeah in your totally life. I, mean, it's like really, I don't the sterilization of it all i, I don't i'm not into it yeah. i just want to be me like everybody at the moment is they just put their diagnosis first mm. and categorize themselves and that's so fucking boring yeah yeah, 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 like, yeah. i'm just I, like he's a character yeah yeah yeah, 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 was yeah, that? yeah. that boy he was a character 
All the guys that were characters in the front bar that I went to when my, I was like drinking with my dad when I was like 17, 18. Yeah. If these days they would have such a list, yeah, of yeah, his yeah, BPD, yeah. To be fair, all the guys in my pub polar. did have a big list because that's how we're on the sick. That's how they're in, that's how we're in the day. In the day. Yeah. They had quite the list of diagnoses. But no, I'll tell you, but what you just, mean, he's man. a character, that film. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it I'm can be useful normal. as a show. As comics go, I don't have anything you're wrong a, with me. No, you're a I sociopath. I don't pretend. No. You don't feel empathy. I, I, it's genuinely yeah, a sociopath. Well, that's I'm mainly, honestly that's like. mainly because I don't like most people. It's mainly because you're dead inside. I like Amos, he's got a boat. <laughs> so, one day, yeah, one day. Yeah, it's not. Oh. It's not that big a boat, mate. Is it not? <laughs> no, it's not good no, no, you're gonna have to go on a Japanese bit, whaling bit ship. Of <laughs> we should get a picture. The only way you're getting out. on a boat is via harpoon. <laughs> Yeah, we don't take a boat to our boat. We take we we take a jetty. We take, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we walk, walk onto the, the boat. Under yeah, the boat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I do think I think yeah. Like people, like, I uh, I think it's really useful for me as a shorthand for a, a, a group of things that affect the way I am. But you can't make it your whole fucking thing, and you can't also right. use it as an excuse not to do anything. And you got to like it's your own shit as well. You can't really expect anyone else to give a fuck. Yeah, the amount of people with the, the ADD one, and it's like yeah, and they haven't had the diagnosis. And yeah. I'll be like, so why do you think you're ADD? And they go, ah, oh, it's just. I just really like struggle to do boring tasks. And yeah, like, yeah. And you go, well, yeah, that, that's why we reward the people that can do them. It's called yeah, discipline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, it, sometimes there's things that I don't want to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it just, I just struggle to have the motivation to do things that I don't like. Well, I'm oh, over here. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm over here getting out of bed in the morning, loving spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I yeah, set the yeah, alarm yeah. because I love to do this. It's like, no, I'm a fucking that is always the problem with yeah. money for That's it. the problem with the medication as well is uh, like, you know, like uh, it, it's why it's, it's why it's difficult to like uh, discuss with people like, because obviously, yeah, like, you know, people like, they're like, but my life's been made a lot better because I'm taking Adderall. I'm doing a lot better. It's like, yeah, everyone gets better when they take Adderall. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. You know, it does make you better at tasks. That's the thing. Like, my my favorite one at the moment is the, uh, is the, a lot of the people that talk heavily about the like imposter syndrome has mm. become a thing that people Oh, that does me. Yeah. most of the people especially right it's all these middle class uh, like uh, yeah. soft comedians who go oh, I've got imposter syndrome no you're just shit you're just shit you are an imposter it's not a syndrome you you have accurately assessed your yeah. talent yeah you, what, you, what you suffer from is um, being perceptive <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that you've got a real yeah. bad case of the realising you paid 10 grand to get yeah, the reviews yeah, yeah. oh my I'm just crippled with awareness syndrome <laughs> <laughs> honestly I don't Every day I wake up with this fucking clarity. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely, oh, I got you by favoritism. Yeah. Oh, I'm not funny at all. I genuinely, I was 3,000 pounds. That's why I'm on the Guardian's top 10 jokes. Yeah. That's true. That was Yeah, uh, Amos has just told me the story about how I got on that list. Okay. Your PR was three grand. Uh, no, I think three grand. His, no, his is so minimum. 2,000 pounds. Amos has the most open wallet in comedy. He basically goes, can you make me famous, please? Help can- me. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Guardian one was a mate. So I, they said to me, we need some, I didn't know this is how this festival worked. Yeah. They said to me. Um, and yours, I, I told him all this. Four, 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 four months ago, they said to me like, oh, can you give us some jokes from your show for like best joke at the festival? Yeah. And I thought people would go around and then like maybe reviewers would go, oh, that was a good bit. Yeah, you'd think that, no, wouldn't you? you actually, yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah, you write your joke or whatever. That's why on the first day, in fact, this year, before the Fringe started, Telegraph, yeah. there was the 50 greatest <laughs> jokes. Yeah. Of like, the festival that hasn't what? begun. It's like if you had goal of the tournament before the fucking <laughs> game had kicked off, before the opening <laughs> ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> really, really odd, isn't it? Yeah. And so I, I remember I was on the I was on a plane like around like Finland or somewhere going on this tour with Jim and I was like, I gotta come up with these jokes and I sent my actual jokes and then very quickly they were like, No. Yeah. <laughs> That's can, not what like, we meant. Can, can you write some like quips? And so I wrote literally wrote this. I said, I'm gonna come up with a joke that they'll definitely publish. Yeah. yeah just yeah. as an experiment. So the joke was um it was uh, last year I had a joke about inflation. But it's hardly worth it now, right? Yeah, Set, hit I think send. I've read that. Yeah, hit send. I read it. I read it uh, before I knew this story from Amos, and I was like, "Oh, Amos!" <laughs> I, I hit send, and, they, and she was like, "Great, I think I can work with that." Then I get uh, pinged with about like thirty notifications on Twitter, and it's like, "You're in the top jokes of the comedy yep. festival." Yep. Got it. What the fuck, man? It's that crazy, isn't it? Sucks. Yeah. It's, and then there's the worst thing is now these people are like in my DMs, like, you're not funny. I'm like, oh no, that wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't my act. Yeah. I'm like, so, fuck. Well, if, if, if that worked the way PR people like you to think it worked, 
And the people that are going to come to your show off the back of that are going to be like, ah, can't wait to hear more of these inflation jokes. Yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. going to be like, ah, right to baby in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to be like, well, that's clearly something to do with Keynesian economic theory. Yeah. I'm right to baby and he cried and my dad owns a boat. <laughs> Honestly, don't, don't bother going to see Omos' show. You've got a picture of it. You are. That is it. I did actually write something similar to that down. And, yeah. And the PO was like, can you make it more concise? <laughs> Does it have to be a baby that gets raped to the face? At least, can we, can we make it like five? Middle, feet in the middle. Yeah, so it's fraudulent. It's fraudulent shit, isn't it, really? I yeah. Oh, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors and bullshit at this festival. Like, that's the thing. Like, there's this whole layer of like, uh, like TV and industry bullshit across the top. But then there's this whole other strata of just like great comedy and amazing shit. And it's like, I love this bit and this bit's shit. Well, I feel know? like a fucking hypocrite because I say that all the time, and then you get lured into like, oh, maybe I do want to. Like, maybe I do want to be. Uh, I want to get these reviews and yeah, yeah. be like, oh, he's he's on the inside track. Of course, in that when you when you weaken. Yeah. And you and you and you get into that, and then you, obviously they don't want you anyway. Then you feel like such a dirty little whore. Well, here's the thing, right? So I think I've not seen your stand up. From what Rob tells me, we're similar in our approaches. Mm, no, I must uh, like writes good comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we're having fun. No, I truly. I was talking to my producer, to Brett about this, mm. and the one thing I've disappointed a lot of people this festival is I've just done comedy how I've always done comedy yeah and my heroes growing up doing comedy yeah I remember thinking I'm a very weak source version of them I'm actually I'm actually not that brutal yeah um but my a lot of the guys I loved were mm. but everyone everyone else just they got really famous and everyone else dropped out of doing that style yeah 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 and then I just stayed the same and all of a sudden people are like he's no holds bar yeah I I'm feel like, the no, same I was as fucking, well I was weak I don't yeah, think yeah. I'm, I don't like think I'm even that ago. dark my stand-up no, isn't not. that dark no. my, my stand-up's really dirty but it's not that dark there'll be the odd dark joke but I get like categorised by people it's like no. it's like fuck also, it also also as well we're like through this podcast linked yeah and I am dark oh yeah and on this podcast I'm way darker yeah yeah like, yeah my yeah, stand-up yeah. is just filthy that's the main thing yeah, I'm interested yeah, in just dirt between being dirty and being dark exactly I have well, the well, odd when, dark when line did, but I'm mainly yeah, smutty yeah being dirty is like here's a joke about uh, having sex with a woman in a lot of detail I, I just do loads being of being dark is like uh, this missing kid yeah, 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 you know exactly. what I mean or whatever so yeah I'll do the odd dark bit but mainly just filth you when, know, when, yeah. I, when I first met him someone had sent me a video it was going around in Australia of a woman getting fucked by a fish and I was like Check that out, mate. And Rob's just like, I don't think you know who I am. <laughs> I was like, I have this about 30 times honestly, already in my DMs. I, 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 just, I, have a- I just went through WhatsApp and I was like, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. <laughs> What's, uh, what fish? It was like a trout. Was we couldn't Tasmanian show, trout. We couldn't show it, unfortunately. Loads of people saying it, we're like, we can't show anything with not animals, like, it's illegal. Not, she shoved it right like up the her ones funny. that used to go on a wall and just look at you. Yeah, like a big mouth, <laughs> big mouth it, goes, <laughs> it comes out of the van, like, take me to the water. <laughs> Throw me in the river. <laughs> Put me in your, your pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your hymen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, I told you to put it on. You're like, no, bestiality, you can't show that. No, it's super illegal. The Australian illegal. News led with it. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I saw it on the telly. And in that. weather today, it was a hot day for this fish as it went inside <laughs> a woman. So we, um, yeah, because we broke, but we're joking. We, we broke the law once. Because there was that, uh, we almost broadcast that thing of a guy fucking a dead rat. Yeah, allegedly this happened. Allegedly this, this happened. Isn't, this is a joke. Well, is it dead rat bestiality? Yeah, yeah, we looked into it. I had to, I had to Google the laws, and it's like, uh, in, under British law, uh, it still counts as bestiality if the animal is dead. It even counts if it's a replica animal that would confuse oh, right. the uh, average person. But, but, but what, what, if, about, what, if, what if you, can you fuck like a fur, a fur toy? Yeah, as long as it depends it's, out. It, as long as it, like it's taxidermy. You can so fuck I it, think, but I as think, long as it's not convincing, and if you video it and it's convincing and people would think it's so, real. So I think as a rule of thumb, it depends what the eyes are. Yeah, if it's got googly so, eyes, so it's got googly googly eyes have at it. you're fine. Yeah. But if it has it's realistic come on its face animal eyes, eyes yeah. you're looking so you're at prison time. Yeah. That people into bestiality have to wait for a dead mm. animal, carry around stick on eyes, <laughs> as it carks it, just as it's dead. Put two goggly eyes on and start to fuck this animal. Imagine how funny a dead fox's head with googly eyes would look while it's getting fucked. <laughs> start, he's going like Mr. Blobby. 
<laughs> had someone from the government there in an official vest be like, that passes the yeah, government. Tick. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, average yeah. man wouldn't be convinced by that. <laughs> Yeah. But it's class what a legal it's, test it's, that'd be. It's under the same laws. It's it's obscenity pornography, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and it's under the same laws as as child porn. It's actually in like it's categorized by different degrees. The obscenity laws and uh, bestiality is in the top with uh, like the worst child porn. It is the same. And the so thing like is, I could is, easily get Tom Binsed for some I've, of the things I've, people have sent me. And he's a he's a well, pedophile. Pedophile. I thought he did the hospital raid. He did. Oh, yeah, he but did. he got caught with a lot of child porn. Yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> Pedophiles only run in hospitals in the UK. <laughs> what? <laughs> a radio presenter? Yeah. <laughs> so he was around the vulnerable. Yeah. And he was it wasn't a real radio presenter. Oh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a bit. It was a bit. It was well, a bit, the thing yeah. is, though, is like I say, if you go to prison for bestiality porn, yeah. the chances are that once you get into the fucking prison and you're, because it's under the same thing as child porn. If that gets around your charges, you're oh, going yeah, to be 100%. How, yeah. You're not going to fucking, you know, be able to explain nuance to fucking I, big I, John, are you? Like, explaining to John that the eyes were goggly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I promise you, mate, I put funny eyes on and everything. <laughs> He's with his shank. He's like, yeah. what do the eyes look like? <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, request from the prison that I get to make a presentation to the other prisoners with a screen, like a Dave Gorman-esque PowerPoint, where I bring up the video. I go, look, look, right, here's my podcast. What we do is we look at horrible videos with a fat man. And, uh, and then what we do at the end, right, we look at these videos. And look, 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 right. It's a dead rat they're shagging. It's I not a child. I would I would request to the prison, knowing that you were doing that, mm-hmm. for me to be able to do your PowerPoint for you. Uh-huh. And it would just be child porn. <laughs> right. So you'd be up in the prison, 300 so your prisoners. your plan is to smuggle child porn <laughs> into a prison. Yeah. Your, well, no, no, no. What I'd do is I'd get it tattooed on my body like in prison break. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> if you I'm fold sure. the fat down. <laughs> Sorry. It's a child. Well, like a mad a, a, a magazine. <laughs> fold out. The, the belly button is a toddler's anus. <laughs> Sorry, Freddie, your plan yeah. to get me into trouble yeah. is to cover your body <laughs> yeah. with tattoos of child porn yeah. and walk into a prison. Yes. Okay, good luck. Yeah. So there's a writer's strike in America right now, so we can, <laughs> they're looking for content. <laughs> prison break six. It's just, just takes his Mount Gambia break. Off, and it's just a kid being bukkake by about nine guys. It's like, how's that going to help? I don't know. Can you imagine that in Memento. Coming to Fox. In Memento, he's trying to piece his life together. He looks at his leg like, what did I do? What's this? He lifts up his belly. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I, I, I like the idea that you get favors in prison by letting the pedophiles just wank over your back because they get to see the thing. They're just like, yeah. Is there you can any, have me lunch. <laughs> sorry, is there any lower strata in the prison system than paedophiles yeah, that's, the group, that's the group you want to win over. That's what he's aiming yeah. for. Day one, wanna, yeah. rules of prison. Yeah. You've got to exert your dominance and yeah. win the pedophiles yeah, over. Yeah. First day, find the biggest paedophile you can and suck him off. That's what you want to do. That's how you make your mark. You let people know no, you're there. No, I think they'd worship me like a god. Oh, like a Buddha. Yeah, yeah. No, no, because he's, I'd, he's have, I'd have the... The, the cherub. Yeah. Fat, yeah. I'd have the stuff on me <laughs> and then I'd be able to like yeah. ration it. Yeah. I'd be I, like, I'm not taking my shirt off unless you give I me a I think you would be Britain's most stabbed man. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would be setting all sorts of records. Which is a festival show in itself. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah. What a reveal at the end when you lift up your scar-ridden, paedophile, tattoo-covered body. <laughs> Do you know what, though? Is every once in a while... You get stabbed, and it'd just be just the right place on the tattoo, so that now you have a three D arsehole. You've got, <laughs> you've got a sharpened toothbrush sticking out of a kid's ass. Dead Men Talking invites you to join the world's largest social network for adult. Try free. Just go to dmt.adultfriendfinder.com to connect with like-minded partners. Looking for sex? Hoping to meet someone special for a hot sexual relationship or even just a quick fling? Adult Friend Finder has helped millions of people find traditional partners, swinger groups, threesomes, and a variety of other alternative partners. As a leading adult-oriented social networking platform, our aim is to create a safe and inclusive environment for exploring all kinds of adult relationships. Join free at dmt.adultfriendfinder.com.
If you're enjoying Dead Men Talking, why not sign up to Patreon? It's patreon.com forward slash Dead Men Talk Pod. And for that, you get an extra episode every single week. But Freddie, I can't afford three pounds because I'm an internally impoverished little spastic. Well, there's a free trial for internally impoverished little spastics. That's good. So for seven days, you don't get to pay anything. You can just ah. come in, have a look round, see if it's for you, and then fuck off. What happens after that seven days? Do I definitely remember to unsubscribe and uh, not pay any money? Bah, 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 bah. Okay, cool. Patreon.com forward slash Dead Men Talk Pod. You'll remember. We hope you're enjoying this week's episode of Dead Men Talking. And I don't care if you are. Here is a little sneak peek of some content from a previous Patreon only episode. If you enjoy it, sign up at patreon.com forward slash Dead Men Talk. If you had to do a, a one time terrorist attack, yeah. you have a budget of. Yeah, <laughs> budget. <laughs> I like this. A like, £100. 100 quid. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. £100 budget. So that's enough for like fertilizer, isn't it? Like, yeah, like, I don't yeah. know how to make a third. I don't know what like growing shit's going on. No, I just mean like <laughs> throw shit at them. I think, right. I think, I think you've got to kill as many people as you can. Uh huh. I, assuming that you're going to be a fatality. Right. What are we saying? How Post I'll... office, easy. <laughs> <laughs> Post office. <laughs> I've been there for ages. <laughs> Do you know, uh, my parents work in the post office and my first job was in a post office yeah. and it was to shred Christmas letters that p- children <gasps> sent in. Oh God, oh, that's, that's why you're like this. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that would give me <laughs> such an erection. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I was checking other kids. I was like yeah. 15. I was checking other kids as like fucking yeah. thank you see if I knew any of them. And be like, did funny. you get your little fucking robot? They should do, <laughs> they should do that as a punishment for bad kids. <laughs> make them yeah. see how it works. <laughs> Just fucking shred. Shredding dreams was yeah. so depressing. So I mean, hundred quid. Hundred quid, right? At that point, right? You're at, you, you're either stabbing or you're like hiring a car. I think hiring a car is your best way to go. Get a van. I think you can make a bomb for a hundred quid. I, can you make a bomb for a yes. hundred quid? Can you make a bomb? Yes. Can you? How? You can make fertilizer. A, you can yeah. make a petrol bomb. Yep, yeah, petrol bomb. Yep, there right, you go. That, that Put a fork in the most microwave. Irish thing you've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> we can make a petrol bomb quite easy. Use yeah. sugar, that's how it sticks to you. All right, great. Yeah. There nice you one. go. Yeah, yeah. So we can make a napalm. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so that's yeah. what I'm going to do. All right, yeah. And Molotovs are a good way to go, to be fair. You can make them pretty right, easy. Right, no, what I'm going to do is um, napalm, but uh, super soaker. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to... How are you going to light it? I'm gonna... You're going to make a homemade flamethrower is your move. Yeah. Oh, no, not, right. not maybe. You would be the only fatality. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, but it'll go off like... You know when they blow up a whale on the beach? <laughs> 17 injured in the blubber shrapnel. It's like a baby drowns in his hot fat. <laughs> Is someone cooking chips? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What about, like, yeah. acid? Well, you can, like, disfigure people with acid, but, like, you know, they don't die. Like, Katie Piper's oh, still no, around. No, it's a terrorist attack, What, well, do you think, it? like, LSD? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. just make everyone freak out, man. <laughs> Spike the punch at some party. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, whoa! Everybody go mental. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Guys, really I think attack. I can fly. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, I think so. fire is quite hard to actually kill people with. It's a really good way to like hurt a lot of people, but killing with fire is hard. Okay. You've got to keep people on fire for a while to get them dead. <laughs> 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 what, what have I said that's wrong? <laughs> it's, no, it's right, yeah. <laughs> it's dark. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? That when is... screams start softening. That's an X-Men <laughs> spin-off that I want to see. Yeah. Like the guy that's got flames as his power, yeah. just toasting some of the fucking <laughs> ages. <laughs> He's not dead. It yeah. takes a while. <laughs> this is the bad guy going, ah, 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 ah. Don't move. <laughs> the yeah. Chinese burned to death. She's <laughs> 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 taking forever. <laughs> Get the other arm, this isn't yeah. working. <laughs> no, I, I reckon, right, here's a good way to do it. <laughs> Uh, you go to one of those villages that has like a school with one of those like thanks for driving slowly things that goes you've driven 25 sad face yeah, and you just yeah. drive dead fast at 3pm okay. there, <laughs> there you go just mow down. children just mow children down people yeah. are going to be dead upset about that yeah, yeah. and if you uh, ter- do a terrorist I attack in a small that. town you, said, you get a good tennis you player said, you said you <laughs> said it's not how it works that's how it worked last time it went really well yeah but you have to do a proper terrorist yeah, attack yeah you got to shoot up a school yeah no right 100 quid get a flight 
mm. and then cause a whole scene. I, I reckon I could bring a plane down somehow. <laughs> How? All right, go. Just causing a lot of hassle. Just <laughs> okay. let me in there. Just He's going to press out. any button. <laughs> bing, bing. You're going to get through a cabin door in a Ryanair fucking flight. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's no, there's just a curtain, yeah. like a beaded curtain. That'd be good. Everyone like diving fucking... shoulder wise. Yeah. Go clean through it and just knock the fucking pilot clean out back. Yeah. You go into the cockpit on a Ryanair flight, they've got like wooden beads on the seat. You've got a tissue box on the dash. <laughs> fucking dice. Yeah, a little hula girl. The dude's cooking the food as well. <laughs> just over an open flame. <laughs> beaded curtain. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway i've realized uh, this podcast uh, there will be no uk career for me on the inside track <laughs> yeah well it's been doing all right for us yeah to be well, honest mate live at the apollo well. yeah <sighs> fuck that well, that's not happening anymore mate no I, you've I, ruined I that some of that the other night <sighs> yeah it's rough in it did you watch um uh, oh, we don't need to name names you can just, <laughs> oh, no, just I, describe i can't remember any of the names but it mm. was a woman talking about a, oh someone. i hate that yeah <laughs> It's the end of the story. <laughs> the thing is, I turn it on. There's a bloody woman talking. There's a lot of there's a lot of great comics who don't get anywhere near live. At the yeah, yeah. But there's a, like, there's an amazing like uh, in their base scene now, and like that's the that's the to be honest, like that's going to do a lot better for you doing podcasts like this than oh, doing stuff yeah. like that. Because like, um, you're going to get the right people to you, not like the Guardian list. Like the people who come off this podcast to see you will actually enjoy your show. There's what? a there's a po- there's a comic called Kane Brown. Who's yeah. fucking phenomenal. So funny. Kane. Never been alive at the Apollo, and he's a black guy yeah. who's like the best. I'd say arguably the best black comic working on the circuit. He's in the conversation. He's definitely he's one in the off, conversation. You know, he's definitely right up there. In, the, in the top yeah, tier. Yeah. Never so much as had a look in. Yeah, yeah. I think for the, for the UK, this is a, this is my perception of the UK and American comedy scene is that black people in America yeah. have have preserved the industry mm. because there's so many of them that are at the top of the game. They're allowed to say in that society as much wild shit as possible. Yeah. And so because they run stuff still, like Dave Chappelle is mm. putting his shit out, you got other other me- mega black comics, the scene is still kind of wild. Yeah. But when the scene is dominated by like the sort of the middle class whites, yeah. like over here, then the mainstream is very dull. But there's still I can good, hear that. there's some I can good hear that. mainstream shit in America yeah, yeah. where people do seem to get ahead because they're very funny. There is, and like that I always think, happens. There are always exceptions of people who make it through, and it's happening more and more nowadays that funny's winning out. You know, I think myself, like, and again, I've never been. I've been to Florida; it doesn't fucking count. Like as a child, yeah, yeah. You just but, wanted to go somewhere he felt thin. <laughs> I really did. It was fucking. It's amazing. like me, and it's cool. like when I go to Holland and I feel don't feel freakishly tall. <laughs> over there, it feels like society is sort of dictated more by race, yeah. but over here, mm. it feels more like the scene is more dictated by class. Like, I have more in common with a working class black comic than I do with a upper class white comic. Like, I have more in common with Dane Baptiste than I do with Tom Horton. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And then, like, for me, when I go over to the States, I do like nights called like Chocolate Sundays or whatever. And it's all, yeah. it's an all black audience. The one and in the Manchester is called Chocolate Sunday. Called Chocolate Sunday. That's I nice. That. The one, yeah, yeah Betty D. Fat cunt. <laughs> the, the one in Manchester is called Laugh Till You Fart. So that's the that's the <laughs> black comedy night in Manchester. Yeah. But as a white dude who comes over, particularly from Australia, I go over there and I'll talk about race a little bit with them. Mm. And if I did it in an all white room, it would be death. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But with when you're you have them actually there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The same as Edinburgh. I've realized how fucking white everything it's is. It's a crazy right white. You yeah, try yeah. and talk about anything race related, mm. and they pull back, and I'm like. I love that black energy of like, say it, yeah, and if yeah, it's good, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. give you, you something big. And if it sucks, we'll, we'll stand up and let you know. boo you off. Yeah. You well, like, I'll tell you, worse than an all-white room is a room with one black person in. That's the tensest. Oh, everyone's like, everyone just looks at them and they're, yeah. <laughs> Fucking brutal. Did you hear about what, the, I'm not sure if I can even say this, but it's very Well, funny. go for it. Uh, did you hear about what they were going to call um, the comedy? It, it was a comedy club that was going to have an, a, a black kind of, you know, comedy night, like the Chocolate yeah. Sundays or whatever. I'm now very worried. And they were looking for a name for it. Oh, no. One of the names touted was Snigger, please. <laughs> which, <laughs> which I think is so... <laughs> VAR, <laughs> VAR on this one, please. VAR. But that's that's genuinely what they thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for a while, that was being touted yeah. as the did name they, for did it. Did they put an A on the end of it, or was it? Uh... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> chocolate Sunday. We'll go with chocolate. Sundays. Yeah, chocolate Sunday's <laughs> better. Yeah, man, it's wetted that little bit out. <laughs> And we're back in. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> welcome back. Uh, we should say that you, I'm surprised you didn't tell me 
Because, you know, you're a big women's football fan and you mm-hmm. did beat Australia. Yeah, we've just been watching the women's football. Where are you, big fan, Freddie? Oh, big fan. Mate, you I, was, the, the... I was actually at the game. You were yeah. there? Yeah. <laughs> quick <laughs> yeah. flight. Well, what, sorry? It is in Australia. That was a very quick flight. What? <laughs> it's, it's in Australia. It? Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, when I say I was there, what I mean by that is that I spiritually was there with the Lionesses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I very much Because, of course, you remember the score. What was it? The score was... Uh, England won. England. What's the score? Three. One. You jammy cunt. <laughs> uh, what an unbelievable guess. Yeah, it was three. This one, is yeah. a feminist podcast. Uh, no, I, I, I almost, I, my sexism was almost cured. Yeah, it was honestly, sport. the, the atmosphere it. was that good. I've and said like, it before. Uh, I, uh, like, I, 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 uh, I'm, like, I'm not like the biggest women's football fan in the world, obviously, like miles off, but I do really enjoy oh, yeah. watching Australians lose at sport. Yeah. It was fucking great. They were all so upset. I don't care about any sport other than football, really. Yeah. And like, Football, football, football. Well, well, yeah, I went and watched it with a lot of Australians and was being a real cunt what about gives it. Me the, I was being a real. The thing dick. that always annoyed me with the women's sport is only one major thing, is it, the one barrier is there is so many women that when I loved football, mm. like, in, who are my friends, they would say things to me like, "Oh, you waste your time yeah, yeah, watching yeah. football." There's so many Just other watching them in, kick a ball so many, around, kick a ball, sports ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You watch your sports ball. But, there's so many other interesting things to do. You should be reading books. You should be watching movies. Mm-hmm. And then now, all of a sudden, they're on board. Yeah. Um, I can't forget that you trashed the game. Yeah, like you're well, not actually a lover of you're not a lover of the game. My missus used to like take it's the a battering piss. ram against men, and then and that's it. For you. Yeah, she'd take the piss and then like objectify the male players. And now we're playing that game both ways. She doesn't enjoy it as much. No. Oh, yeah, nice. Now, awesome. now I'm watching women's football. Like, bleh. I um, <laughs> I uh, no, nah, there's, there's nothing in it for me because the football isn't the sort of quality that I'd. <laughs> that, that is it. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not being horrible or anything like that. I'm just sort of saying I don't watch it. For this the big same athlete reason. is our queen. You know, he only, he only accepts the highest standards. I don't of watch athleticism. women's football for the same reason I don't watch the Paralympics. It's like I, I watch see, both because they're I, funny. I, no, I want to <laughs> <laughs> like, watch the. The, the, the best. Re- I want to watch the record get broken. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to watch your version. I think you're mental. The, the Paralympics is well better than the Olympics. No, I don't. I don't. There's loads with it. of like cheeky laughs you get along the way. Don't get me wrong. I don't really care about the Olympics either. Yeah. But I'm like, I, I would watch the men's hundred meter final. I wouldn't watch the because yeah, it's done in eleven Olympics. seconds or ten. What is it? Nine seconds. But the thing is, yeah, uh, you don't have to write off an afternoon. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> it's like, I've got enough. The problem is, I've got enough of my life wasted right now with so many sports yeah, yeah. that there is men's teams that I'm. I'm not watching Wolves yeah. play in the Premier League. I've got too many games that I'm watching across many leagues. I can't add in shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, look, I'm. I'm very much going to be a glory supporter with uh, with his football. I will tag in when we're we're in a semi final hey, World Cup. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not like one of those. Oh, they should never be allowed to play it or whatever type thing. I think it's go ahead. Do you know what I mean? I love how your how sport, gracious of you. I love how your sport is is getting. I'm sure, people. women will be delighted. Like they get the Quinn growing. seal of approval. Yeah, no, yeah. I like how it's growing. I like how you're doing your own thing. I, I don't like how your like tits it. are growing. Your so fat cut. I don't like it how they compare it to male football. Like they go, yeah. well, the women don't get paid as much. It's like yes, because it's shitter. <laughs> like a- economy. Oh, I wonder why. Like well, that and that's that fucking bird did that bit. And I had that going for ages where I was like, you don't get paid. Was how much tonight? Uh, yeah. Sorry, the game we watched today. No one had a kit on. Yeah. No, no that woman. That is the Edinburgh Festival though. Yeah. Like you would no, see but no, like, one, no yeah. woman has a kit. Okay. I don't know any girls that are into football right now that own a kit. You have to buy merch yeah. to support the group. Yeah. That's yeah, where yeah. they get paid from. Yeah. You don't buy merch. <laughs> when I wear my fucking Spurs kit with yeah. sun on the back, my girlfriend's like, that's not something we can wear outside to dinner. Yeah, yeah. And that's why the men get paid more is I will dress shit in a Spurs kit so that that player yeah. can advertise for to me and fly private because yeah. he's taking money from me and my friends. You spend your money on Dior and that's why Christian Dior is wealthy. Yeah. This is how yeah. it works. It's yeah. just simple economics. So we're saying Dior designed football kits and we've sold it. If they should, they need to get Louis V on board. They all need to get into Napoli. They've got Armani kits, innit? Like, Armani's low rent now. Yeah, they're though. fucking shit. They're really shit as well. They're really like, Armani isn't high class anymore. It's, it's a fucking Eastern Dude, European. This is what, every time clothes, I see Armani, I think Armani exchange, gold trim shirt. Mm-hmm. And then for some reason, every European that I'm like related to. I imagine all your Croat yeah, family. It's, always, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's always the Formula One shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't Ferrari they, shoes. They the Ferrari shoe and the yeah. Porsche watch. My favorite is, And yeah, then they drive a Toyota. That's, that's it. Garbage. I always love like, you know, someone will have a Honda Civic with a Ferrari <laughs> air freshener. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, like, yeah. nah. <laughs> 
<laughs> nah. Why would you, this is the constant sadness of being reminded. What it's it like if I be. wore a David Beckham t-shirt. It's just like, hmm? <laughs> it would be better though. Like that'd be the coolest thing to do is to get a Ferrari and then have a, a high Toyota. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be such a flex. And you go, mm, smells like what I used to be when You're I was just like, One day, <laughs> that's my dream car. <laughs> Yeah, just love love getting in my Ferrari and smelling an I-10. <laughs> like, always good to be reminded where you came from. <laughs> <laughs> That's good merch. They're getting a mansion yeah. and having like chip fat air fresheners. <laughs> As if you wouldn't do that. I'd love that. If you had a mansion, it would stink a chip fat. No, because I'd have people... You, If you were side. like billionaire rich, you'd definitely have the Richie Rich McDonald's in your basement. 100%. Mm. I'm trying to think what I would do with that. Sort well, of next to your child sex slave Shaggy boss's mum. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to do that anymore. Though, yeah. You're about five years away from that. She's going to be 67. <laughs> like, she's holding on, but like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too, I'm way too open about my mother's sexuality. Eh? Yeah. How old are you, Amos? I'm 32. 32. Yeah. yeah so me, but me, I've had her. But she's a very open person. My mum's wild, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. My mum, I remember once, <laughs> it was like 15 people at a table and then we talk, people were talking about circumcision. She goes, oh, I got my boys circumcised. And one of them was like, oh, well, you know, it was medical. Or She goes, no, because I wanted women to want to suck them. Wow. And she goes, that's what I want. She goes, that's, what, that's the kind of dick I want in my mouth is a circumcised one. That and, is insane. <laughs> And like, so, I, like other mums, so she's molded you to her sexual preferences. <laughs> wow! <laughs> she's like, you know, it's like if my mum tried to make me a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah. Imagine if you had daughters and you were like, "Oh no, I'm making sure they shave their pubes." No, I've just got her a labia yeah. plastic. Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. stand like, an ugly vag. The kind of pussy I want in my mouth. Oh god! <laughs> you, want, you want you want your son to get roots? Don't you? Sure, but like, I think in one that's a more abstract feeling than that. I think like, you know, my mom would be like, yes, I'd like my, my boy to meet a nice girl. Yeah, I don't I think she'd be my like, I'd like my, mom to get, I'd like my boy to get sucked off <laughs> regularly. I don't think that's not a conversation me and my mom would have. Yeah. Well, my mom was like, she's a, she was brutal about appearance. She's like, mm. you know, she does Botox for a living and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And so I used to have friends come over and she'd sniff them, like, you're disgusting, you smell. She'd put them in the bath, she'd make them wash. There's this one kid called Tom Cullen. He was from fucking, he was from uh, Cumbria and he came to Perth for a while and he came over and he took off his shoes and my mum sniffed his shoes and threw them in the bin and gave him a hundred bucks and said, buy better shoes or you'll never get a girlfriend. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Like, wow! Just throwing him his shoes in the <laughs> bin. She's like, those shoes are done. They stink. They they're worn out. So did have to walk barefoot to a shoe shop. Yeah. No, my mum would do that to my friends all the time. We'd go to a party and she'd look at like my friend Dylan and she was like, "You're not wearing that out." And then we'd stop off at a place and she'd buy him a t-shirt. That's <laughs> such a great way to scam his mum. Why isn't is it? your mum so interested in uh, teenage boys fucking? She wanted you to look good, man. Yeah. <laughs> she's got you know she's got the two new kids now right yeah and uh, they're like not her you know they're not her DNA well yeah like you yeah. know biology is yeah. a thing mate she, that, she, that, that ship has sailed she, she, she <laughs> that I, boat has left port <laughs> <laughs> she IVF them at age 53 Ooh. right yeah so, I think some things are against God like at some point you know we have to just dust babies <laughs> dust babies <laughs> They have like fully formed heads and things. They're, look, they're, they're hanging in there, okay. But in like, my head, in, in my head, the, the schools are shaped like Pac Man, and there's yeah. just like a thing like missing. Like, Kill me! <laughs> like that. One there's, of them has to live in the attic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of tubes coming from they're naps crunchy. and stuff. They're crunchy. And <laughs> crunchy. Oh god. They rustle when they walk. <laughs> they take photos of them, and it comes out in sepia. <laughs> Even put a filter on this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh man, these old babies. But yeah, but my mum's weird. She's so she's so. It's weird watching your mum parent mm -hmm. now yeah. because it's like you see why you you're see. damaged. Yeah. And so like you know, my little sister will fucking you know she goes and eats something, and, and mum will be like, "You're going to be a big fat little porker, and no one will ever love you." And these are the things wow. that my mum would say to us, and I'll be like. Don't fucking say that to her. Yeah. And, and I'm getting angry because I go, that's the kind of shit that you that you did to us. And mum's just yeah. like, and that's why you've gone on to do things with your life. Drive, anger, you know, perfection. But wow. <laughs> My mum was just like, I, I hope would have had do. a field day with him. Oh God, yeah. She would have never <laughs> stopped. I would love she would have looked at this and gone, like, oh, look at that. You got stained. He's always got a bit there? of stain down himself. Give him a new Honestly, I want your mum to meet Freddie so badly. Why? Because you're a disgusting mess. What do you mean? 
I'm a disgusting mess. You're a big, fat, yes, stain-riddled, right. yeah. horrible, it's fine. smelly this is, cunt. This is absolutely fine. This is all Those would be in the bin for a start. Those would be in the bin. You'd have $100 is, in your pocket. Get yeah, any yeah, you're getting not, $100 not, for them. I'm not bringing nice trainers to the Edinburgh Fringe where I'm walking 20,000 fucking steps You are not walking 20,000 steps a day. You are getting five taxis a day. You are not walking 20,000 steps. Shut I'm your fucking five, mouth. You're getting, you're getting five taxis a day. I literally, I did, had, to, I literally I had to push him up a hill. Yesterday. I had to push him up a hill yesterday. I literally physically Push. pushed him up a hill. Physically pushed him up a hill. He didn't have to. He took it upon himself. Yeah. To no, because he was... Mad we'd taken three steps and he was wheezing. Uh, like, I had to... It was a big hill. It wasn't that big a hill. It was a huge... It was fucking... It's the one at the Pleasance. It was rock, mate. It was, it's, it's it's not it was the Uluru, it, it, Yeah, it was Uluru. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah, it was... You can't a... climb Uluru. No, I've got aunties who are like that. You're not allowed to climb Uluru and even the band, you can't climb it anymore. So you'll never get to do that. Right. It's a well, it felt like that's yeah. what it would have been. And like. I've got aunties that are like, I've always wanted to climb that. You're like, you bitch, you're 140 kilo. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you don't get out of your chair. To be honest, that ban isn't you know? affecting Freddie that badly. No. Oh, but, I can't go rock climbing, but can the I? Thing is, the thing is, you're also is, banning is, ballet. There comes the point when you're not a traditionally attractive man, there comes the point where people look at you and they go, this, we can only take this so far. So why bother? Yeah, you know it's, like, I mean? it's like when you get put in for your GCSEs in a remedial paper, even if you get 100%, you're getting a D. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you're like a John Bull figure. A, a what? Like a John Bull, you know, the embodiment of like the Northern Englishman, no. big, thick, full fella. Pub, like, a, like a, you know, like a publican. I would, that's I would good say in its own right, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, that's the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. What you're saying like, is, you, you, like, look, you, you look like a Toby joke. I, basically, I'll take that. Yeah. I will take that. <laughs> but what I mean is that if your mum was to meet me, I feel like she'd go, "That's too big of a project for one woman." <laughs> yeah, you no, know, like on Grand Designs where they buy a house and it's just derelict. There's leaves like, growing out the walls. Got, you're like, you've, you've got, got too much. Knocked, yeah. You're saying you're not. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's too big don't of a project. An, don't buy an old castle. Just buy a plot of land and build something new. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're the one that Kevin McLeod comes back to three years later, and it's still. Not built from, from having like never met but only heard about in this conversation i get where she's coming from in a way where she's like smart and up don't eat shit and all this stuff because a lot of good things in her life seem to have happened because she's fit right right aesthetics is important. well i think mainly exactly. Exactly. eastern european swag. women that is our export so mm-hmm. totally so if world-class slags if if look if i was <laughs> millennia trump Leads the way. <laughs> if I was if I was a gorgeous older lady who had sort of shagged my way into gold mine dynasty money, basically if you had slightly would, less would, saggy tits, I, I would really value aesthetic beauty. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, I'd be like, holy shit, don't eat that fucking cookie. Yeah, you, you what can, are you, you doing? Can, you can do that in a way that isn't uh, psychologically damaging. Damaging the children. You can just go, yeah. oh, hey, we have a nice carrot. You offer them the nice food. You don't give them the shit. You know, you don't like, you don't need to be like abusive about Christ, it. Right, you can tell you've never had kids. Yeah. Oh, hey. Oh, I suppose to you, father of the year. Like I like I want to have fat kids because uh, you know genetics. It's fine. Like, you know it's not going to be an issue in my life. It's fine. Mate, but I also I won't be shouting God, at them when you have children. Yeah. Oh, if it's disabled, I honest to God. Honestly, like there's loads of disabilities. I'd be I'd be quite up for. I'm watching Down with Love at the moment. You seen this? What? Like Down syndrome dating sy- uh, program on Netflix. And I what's it called? I'm, it's called Down, Down with syndrome Love. Syndrome dating. Yeah, yeah. I, I want one because they they copied the Australian one with the autism. Yeah. yeah. Oh no! Like we've had that as well. We had the autism. Oh, so like, this is yeah. a question I always ask dealers at casinos. <laughs> Okay. Right. Just as a bit of banter. <laughs> just goes, what do so I do? <laughs> so I sit down and then you're talking. I always, just as a bit of fun, if I'm hammered, I always go, what are your, like, if you, if I, a 32 year old man, mm-hmm. am fucking a 32 year old girl with Down syndrome. Me and my missus have been discussing this. I'm like, yeah. I go, would you? Three and, I, and I sat here with her. <laughs> <laughs> I just want that grip strength. No, and I, I just and like I'm, whether I'm it's sat all at the right. table yeah. with her right now and mm-hmm. we're necking on. She's watching me as I gamble with you. Is am I progressive or, or a rapist? I think a rapist. I think it's not okay. But legally, where's that at? Legally, I've no idea. But like, uh, I if one of my friends brought a date and they were Down right. syndrome, okay. I would have words with okay. them. Okay, okay. Unless it was Freddie, so, and then I'd be like, so, "Well done, mate. Right. You're doing very so well I for think yourself." It's absolutely fine, and I'm going to tell you for why, right? Because so you're a big fat rapist. Imagine, rating. imagine you get caught fucking a 15 year old. But you go, nah, she's one of those that's gone to university oh, yeah. early. She's got she's the brain actually, of a 32 year old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's actually up here. She, it's like uh-huh. she's 19. She's in her second year of uni. So it's not really, you'd yeah. be like, you're a Peter. Uh huh. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. So we're saying is. What do you mean, there you go? You just said an entirely unrelated figure, then said, there you go, unrelated. like I had a point. I'm saying, I'm saying, if, if she was. Yeah, that younger, doesn't work. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 no
would you have more respect for me? I'm dating. Okay, I'm fucking uh-huh. a 15 year old girl who is like a Daria type, right? Mm-hmm. She's 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 reading Camus yeah, yeah. and she's writing a paper on Michelle Foucault. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right? She's a little French yeah. existentialist. Uh-huh. She's quip smart. She's smarter than almost anyone you know. She's, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm having. But is a child. Right? She's a child. To be clear. Yeah. Is a child. It's wrong. I'm not saying this is right. I'm saying, but I'm fucking her. Are you basically or- saying which of your girlfriends should you keep? <laughs> It's just what this situation is. This, this does seem like there are other like casino dealers who are like, I, 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 you should probably speak to your lawyer. <laughs> but, or so her, I, right, yeah, or, or I've got like a 35-year-old Down syndrome girlfriend who's legally of age, but you yeah. talk to her and she's like, hey. Right. Either way, I'm going to quietly delete this podcast episode and pretend we weren't mates. <laughs> but which like, one do you think is actually morally worse? I think the Down syndrome one. You think it's worse? Yeah, I think that for some reason I think I'm taking way more advantage. It's, well, it's, it's about who has the least, uh, yeah, capacity to consent, I guess. Like, neither of them legally do, I think, and like, all morally. So how do they life. actually, we don't have a Jamie to pull No, so they, up, uh, but... like, what they do is they, they hook them up with other people who have a similar mental capacity. No, 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 but I'm saying, like, 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 let's say that, like, for some reason we've just bonded over something. Mm-hmm. And we're about... uh, uh, such as what? <laughs> Butterflies. Come on. I, I want to hear what you Wait. and this uh, mentally incapacitated. <laughs> I'm on MDMA and I'm smiling at a rainbow. <laughs> you very much come down to their level. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's like, I like that rainbow. And you're like, me too. <laughs> I'm on Molly. And I've never seen anything as good as the rainbow. She agrees. Everyone else is like, Amos, you're childish, you're childlike. She's like, no, this, she gets and, me. And she gets it. So we start making out because she sees the colour spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> She's on the spectrum. It's not the basis of a long-term relationship. Honestly, this might we be that when we both liked rainbows. <laughs> the end. <laughs> not the flimsiest relationship that Amos has been in. <laughs> it's been worse, man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but there's okay but we we, we make oh it is we're, we're making out from that and we mm-hmm. maybe had sex yeah is, uh, is, i think it can't be it can't stand it's not cool it's not cool, it's not cool. It's no not i don't cool. think it's cool because on dating on the spectrum that show there were people who were very severely autistic mm-hmm. and then there's other people who well, like, really autism, just like collected things also autism is very different because like it depends how functionally well with it if you're like totally like you know mute autistic yeah. and like really at the extreme end of the spectrum then yeah sure that's a different thing where there may be like diminished responsibility but most autistic people just think differently and they're like just yeah but you, you know, knew when you see yeah. the show there are those ones that the, oh yeah knew, sure and you go like they did pair them up they always say yeah, yeah, people yeah. with a it's similar it's like the Paralympics degree. put them in a yeah. similar category yeah. it? So, the problem with the Down syndrome dating is they all immediately the first person they're put with they're like I love them and it's like yeah, yeah, there's yeah. some of them yeah, where it's yeah. like you can do better you can do better. Like, okay, and so is that is that seen as a progressive show? Because to be honest, a lot of people I know that watch the shows mm-hmm. are really just laughing at. Well, no, this is how they, this is how they get away with these shows: is they present them as look at this heartwarming, lovely story, yeah. and you can watch it like that, and a lot of people do. But also, there's another way. Oh, they also it. every every episode of the Undateables, they have to have a fit one that's just in a wheelchair. Mm. So that's for that's for the dads right, 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 right. to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what would I? That's mm-hmm. that's what that's for, and then most of the time, because what you're doing basically is you're. I, I think a lot of the enjoyment about the undateables is you are genuinely just laughing at two autistic people in a cafe, and they're not just laughing thing. though. It is genuinely like nice. No, but they purposely insert like pauses to make it awkward, where they're like. Yeah, there's I think the autistics do that themselves. <laughs> no, I know. I don't but, think you need to make the, the autistics edited, pause. The way it's edited, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they they add extra pauses, and they they, they do make them look in. But they are, they're they looking, are, yeah, because they're fucking. And, and they're making telly. Yeah, yeah they're making you telly. Know, these are trying to tell that. They make them more. They well, do. like there is a, a genuinely like how what we think to it. The down, like the down we love thing. It's genuinely like a really nice watch because they're really lovely and it's like you know it's nice. But well, it the, is also the reason funny I stuff like as well. I think a lot of people who don't have autism watch that dating on the spectrum yeah. show, and they did go. I would like dating to be like this because of the quick nature of going. I, I am Darren. I like trains. Are you a fan of trains? And then the guy's no. like, no. You're like, right, fuck Good, off. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. I like, well, I like how upfront it is. Like, that's great. Like, that's what I like with autistic people generally is like, they're very upfront and just tell you what they're fucking thinking. It's a lot easier. Yeah, it's black you know? and white, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, Well, it's just like, they're just, uh, you know, don't stand on graces as much. They'll just say it. Yeah. Like, but I that's like what that. TV producers do, right? Is like, this show worked. Yeah. And so then they're like, we need Down syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's going to get there's bad. There's going to be an American 
one on like TLC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is just going to basically get those people with that. Mm. What's that syndrome where they're crunched into a little body and they live, <laughs> they live with the, what's those ones in the wheelchair? I was going to say a Ocean Gate syndrome. <laughs> I know the ones you mean. The ones that look like those, <laughs> those little aliens you get in an egg outside the front of a supermarket. You know what I mean? This is a, I can't say this story, but there's a, there's a person who has that, that and you have the brittle bone syndrome yeah. and they're like that. Yeah. And anyway, apparently she got fucked by a big, big bloke and he killed her. <laughs> I don't know where he expected that story to end. <laughs> I love how few details are out of this story as well. This is such your mate telling you something at school. Because now there's this uh, guy, right? No, because there's details. I like, can't imagine hearing Tell it. Tell me the details. The details. Imagine being his flatmate and hearing it in the next room and being like, are you driving a truck over twigs? Like, just, just snapping. Why are you throwing ham at a wall? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's a squirter. No, she's just popped. <laughs> she died. Stop playing with tinfoil in that room. <laughs> Stomping on those things that they put in packages. <laughs> Polystyrene peanuts. Oh, what'd you get from Amazon? <laughs> Anyway, it was a sad story. <laughs> <laughs> and then I love going if you did that, right? Say, right, say you're the guy in but, that situation. Yeah. You've banged the brittle bone woman and you've killed her. Yeah. Is there a little bit of you that's going to be proud? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it, it is you know, a, like when Bruce Lee was like, my hands are registered yeah, as lethal yeah. weapons. You'd be saying that about your dick. <laughs> but like, there is, a, there is a, like, a fucked up thing about male sexuality where like, if a, if a woman's like, oh, a bit hurt afterwards, you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did that. A friend of mine uh, put a girl in hospital when he was fucking her. Um, I mean, not to that degree. I just meant like a bit of a sore vag because you've battered her cervix a bit. No, she's you know, not I wasn't having, like, uh, I'm not trying to like kill people. I'm just trying to fuck them out. She had a problem with her uh, uh, womb. Um, Why did you say that like that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to inject a bit of light into the story. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You say yeah, things yeah. in a fun way. Yeah. So on, a, on, a, on a wild side note, we're going to say, like, Lindsay Santoro, one of my fun, uh, the favorite ways to say a word ever yesterday, she said, vagina is vagina. Yeah, <laughs> really, yeah. I've been saying it in my head all day. So, she, um, uh, so anyway, he, he fucks her and she has like a problem with, like an undiagnosed problem with her womb. And as he's fucking her, uh, her, her whole stomach and muscles are twitching and stuff, and she's screaming in agony, wakes up the entire house. They have to ring an ambulance, and he gets taken away oh, and man. shit like this. And he dined out on that story for <laughs> years. Honestly. like Put he, her in hospital. Don't it. worry about it. He that's honestly his, said it. B- bumble about me. He said it. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's just not even a picture of him. It's just the discharge form from the hospital. He honestly it's a frail said it. Looking woman with a wristband. He said it like a man that had just completed an Iron Man. <laughs> like put her in hospital. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah, really yeah. proud of himself. Yeah, yeah. she's. Got, it's going to be tough for her to be a mother. <laughs> 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 Very nice. Yeah, they're right. Nice. Yeah. They're Get right. that one written into the Guardian. <laughs> clip, clip. <laughs> Guardian's top 10, maybe. Inflation, though. Oh, it's God. Hard. What, what yeah. a time. What a time. Yeah. Yeah. No, so the, 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 there is those shows and you do go, mm. well... Are we going to get to a point where you're not allowed to be with a disabled person? Because like, do you know any people who are, like, able-bodied and a disabled couple? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know a guy who goes out with a, a woman with dwarfism. Yeah. Uh, do you? Married and happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comedian Gareth Berlin. Yeah, Gareth. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, yeah. like, there's nothing. But uh, I've heard people be like. like if it, and if it's a physical disability, who gives a fuck? Oh, who know, gives a like, shit? Exactly. Uh, like, Lost Boy Skies had able bodied girlfriends. Yeah, stuff. physical you know, disability is one doesn't matter. When mental it changes is mental capacity, exactly. then mental's then. different. Like, but, physical doesn't fucking matter, obviously. But what about when they say power imbalance? Yeah. Because that's that. That's the dodgy one now. I think it depends how reliant they are mentally. Like yeah, how yeah. cognitive? And it's all what, about cognitive. If you've got like a, a perfectly uh, normal adult functioning brain, but they're in a so body that's here's fucked, what you know, here's like, the way that you solve this, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say you are a person with no uh, mental handicaps or anything like that mm-hmm. or whatever, and you, you can dream. You you take your new partner who has got what what were we saying? Prada Willy. Prada Willy, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, you take her to a centre. It's a condition right. where they eat too much. Call and it's fat called again. like, really? just call them fat again. It's, it's, it's this recognized center. There's like six in the UK in my brain. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You take them to the center 
And they go, oh, hello, Mr. Quinn, and hello to Jenny or whatever. And then they go, right this way, Jenny. And then they put her in this room and you get to watch through windows, you know, like police can watch through Mm -hmm. one-way windows. And they put her in a room and they give her tasks like the cube. Mm -hmm. And however many she completes... Is like they. How do many a, times you get to jizz on it? No, no, no. They do a score at the end. Yeah. So it's a and taskmaster, but to check to see if they're yes, mentally capable. Yes, I think yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. talking about. And this gets, man has met a woman. It gets streamed on Channel Five. Right. Uh, now I'd pay th- between three and six quid a month to watch that uh-huh. on a weekly basis. Yeah, the thing is, like they do already do tests to see if people are mentally competent. That's no, but this thing. is to see if they can fuck. <laughs> Right. Just like Atos fit for work, but uh-huh. fit for shagging. Yeah. How fit are you for work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, make it happen, <laughs> mate. Yeah. I, I can't think of a single problem with that, and it's the best solution. Mm-hmm. The pro- well, I think the main problem with it is and the money half they- of the people are not going to be fit for them, and you I, just watch them get I, I, fucking I, I, rattled I, for a money, test. The money that you uh, spend on the streaming service keeps the center going mm. and, it, and we yeah. work for a cure or something it's you a, put that at the, the mr yeah, beast model um, yeah and, and it's a non-profit and yeah. any extra gets towards a nah, cure. You've, you've had a, you've, you've you've got too much of an incentive not to make a cure everyone's making money about this shit going <laughs> that money's not, not going like we're to making the a cure. cure anyway is it it's yeah. not like this money was gonna go it's it's yeah. well if you want to help uh, prada willy syndrome we've got one on the podcast and so you can send us three pounds a month via patreon to keep him in cakes and whatnot what is prada willy it's a syndrome where you eat too much and just keep it's eating. It's called Prada Willy. Prada Willy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just the thing where people get really, really fat. They can't stop eating and like they have to like restrain them to stop them like breaking into right, the fridge right, and like right. basically they become like big bears. So if they got the gastro bed, yeah. things in their stomach, what, they'd just expand their oh, stomach I don't know, Yeah, I think they just would. Prada, they just keep pushing through yeah. it. Prada. I don't know loads about Prada Willy, but yeah, I think so. <laughs> Prada Willy is very, it's a very unfortunate name. It's Italian if, porn star. Yeah. I think it's what Especially your mom you, goes after. Prada Willy. <laughs> if you have... <laughs> If you have any like like shares in Prada, yeah. you'd be like, ah, oh. could you not call it Versace dick? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> that is their uh, their their big and tall range for Prada, the Prada Willy range. <laughs> it's like the the high end Giacomo. <laughs> It's sitting there for uh, the Prada Willie range. Ah, oh, God, uh, I've got to wrap this up. I've got to drive to like uh, fucking right. Liverpool, mate. It's been so good having you on. It's so good to see mate, you, mate. I've been sitting in this student accommodation yeah. um, with performers who are in like cabaret and stuff. Yeah. So this has been a wonderful spew of bile. Just a little, a little just toxic to, holiday just for to, you. Just, to, just to hear some fucking chat. Yeah. When's your special coming out, man? Are you putting that on YouTube? I, uh, no, I told you about that. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put something out very, yeah. very. Soon. I want to film it in America. I didn't want to do it in Australia. Fair. Australia, it's like, it's a fucking, we're such a parochial country. Yeah, yeah. I can't help but to put too much fucking references for Australia. So yeah. I'm going to film it. Nice. Well, uh, yeah, definitely go watch. There was a class stand up getting followed uh, on social media and whatnot. And uh, yeah, go see what you're doing, like a tour of Europe and stuff soon, aren't you? I'm doing a tour of Europe and uh, I'm going to come back. I think I was talking to some people. I'm going to come here and do a tour of the UK. Same I right. want to do fucking Liverpool, Manchester. Yeah. I'm definitely going to Cork. I'm going to yeah. get a Galway. I like I, I Amazing, love man. Ireland, man. Yeah, and let us know when you're doing that, man. We'll get it out to people and, and come see you. Uh, thanks for being here, mate. Thank um, you very much. Yeah, man. get on our Patreon and send us in uh, WhatsApps. There's a number in the uh, thing below. You got anything else to say, Freddie? No. Right. Go fuck yourself. Damn.